It was just a regular weekend morning for me. I slept in today and woke up at 8 a.m. Some say that's early, but I see it as a norm. I'm usually up at 6 a.m. earlier on special occasions. Aside from watching the NBA playoffs and working on assignments, I don't know what I'm going to do today. Speaking of the NBA, my favorite team is the Miami Heat and I have four LeBron jerseys. I just recently ordered a Luka Doncic jersey because he's one of my favorite players in the league. I'm getting a Bam at a bio jersey soon, so I'll be happy when it comes. Anyways, I should introduce myself. I'm Jordan, and I'm a third year student at the University of Toledo studying media communications. Throughout the day, I'm usually watching TV or playing video games for my PS4. The footage that you see of me cleaning was shot before game five of the Heat and Bucks game. So since this is my first video, I will tell you a little bit about myself and my takeaway from the Heat and Bucks game. I grew up in Dayton, Ohio, and life at that time was pretty good. I wasn't the type of person that would get into a lot of trouble. I was just kind of to myself, just minding my own business. And it was pretty much like that throughout my school years. I mean, elementary school, don't really remember much. Middle school and high school had some moments here and there. But more importantly, I got into sports at a young age. The earliest sports I remember playing were baseball, basketball, and even a little bit of soccer. Played soccer for about a year before I dropped it. Baseball for about a few years. And then basketball also for about a few years. I didn't pick up basketball again until I was about 10 years old. And I would say I started to like it around that time, 10 to 12 years old. And that's when I started paying more attention to the sport and game. And that helped me going into middle school when I actually started playing. Now, back then I wasn't really that good of a player, but it necessarily wasn't a bad thing because around that same time, that's when I started running track as well. And after the track season of my freshman year of high school, the coach considered me to run cross country beginning my sophomore year. So I took him up on that offer, and that was just when like a new version of me was kind of like born, because I tried something that I had no prior experience of, something I didn't think I would like, and I actually enjoyed running. Even though basketball is my favorite sport, and it was my first love, when I started running, it just kind of changed my life forever. It introduced me to new experiences and memories that I'll remember forever. I have a lot of memories from that, but I can go more in depth about that some other time. It just made me appreciate long distance running even more. And I knew after the first time I tried it, it was something that I wanted to be good at and something I want to implement in my life forever. So even to this day, I try to go outside and run a couple miles just to see where my stamina is at, see how my breathing is since I can't do it competitively right now. But ever since then, running has been a big part of my life and I'm going to continue to do that. But I might make a separate video talking about my track and cross country experience in high school later down the line. Just depends on how I'm feeling and how this video does or pretty much whatever happens in the future. But fast forward to college and so far it's been a blast. I've had a lot of fun, met a lot of cool people, and I really enjoyed everything about it so far. I wasn't really a talkative person in high school, which kind of makes it ironic that my major is media communications, which is a major where you pretty much have to talk to people. So you're probably wondering why did I choose that major? And I honestly couldn't give you a straight answer for that. I guess you could say was 
just wanted to prove to myself that I was able to do this because I do like talking about sports. I grew up watching basketball, football, you know, the big, big sports out there. And this was just something that I wanted to prove to myself that I can do. And I've been doing well so far in college. And I think the college environment really helped me come out of my shell, becoming more approachable and more outgoing when I meet new people. So it's just, I guess it was just a mental thing. I was always second guessing myself. And I just kept telling myself, you can't fail at anything that you don't try. So I'm learning every day, just trying to better myself, trying to put myself out there better, trying to approach people, meet new people. And I've just been having a lot of fun. Even coming out here and recording this voiceover right now is kind of nerve wracking for me. Because in the back of my mind, I'm just thinking, what am I doing this for? But I just got to keep telling myself, I'm doing this for a reason. I'm doing it because I want to do it. So I just need to hammer that into my head. And hopefully, as time goes on, I'll be more comfortable with putting myself out there. And it was just... It was one of the biggest learning points that I've gained from college so far. It wasn't like the hardest part as I've been to classes or any of the schoolwork. It was just the social interaction that I was really wanting to gain out, out of this. And I feel like that I'm getting better socially because I met a lot of nice people, a lot of cool people here, a lot of understanding, I would say, and I just appreciate everything that's been going on so far. My first two years, I've always met a lot of new people, and now I'm in my third year here, and it can be kind of tough because of the whole COVID situation. You can't really go out and much but I still have uh, my friends that I met the past two years to go and talk to but also at the same time just trying to see what I can do to put myself out there more so and this is one of the main reasons why I'm doing this I felt like this this was the opportune time to start something like this and hopefully that I can keep consistent with it and get better at this as time goes on. I'm still getting used to the online classes because this is the first year slash semester where I actually had online classes, but they haven't been too bad as of right now. I've always wondered how I would look back at this year if things do go back to normal anytime soon, but I mean, I've been doing fairly well with the online classes. It's obviously not the same as being in person, but I'm just trying to make the most of my time that I have here. But enough of me rambling. I'm gonna just get on to the game, which was the Miami Heat and Milwaukee Bucks game four. Now, coming into this game, I was heavily confident that the Miami Heat were gonna finish a job, especially when Giannis came out the game. But I also, at the same time, had a sick feeling that they weren't gonna go down easy. And that's exactly what happened. I'm not completely nervous about the way the series is gonna play out, but at the same time, I kinda did see this coming. Because once Giannis left the game, it wasn't going to be an easy game because the Bucks' entire offense just completely changed. It, they had more ball movement, which made them even tougher to guard, even without Giannis, which is kind of crazy to say. 
because with Giannis it was more stationary, Chris Milton didn't really ISO that much with Giannis on the floor. But since it was him as the lone all-star, he just went to work and he just torched us in the second half. Giannis was on pace to drop at least 60 on the Miami Heat until he went down in the second quarter after he re-aggravated his sprained right ankle he suffered in the last game. And at that time, I wasn't feeling too confident about it, but I did like our chances to end the game. But at the same time, it would just open up more opportunities for the other Bucks players to step up, like Chris Middleton, Brooke Lopez, Eric Blesso, which they all stepped up in that game. It was closely contested throughout the duration of the game up until the fourth quarter where some things kind of happened to where I felt like we could have done things differently there. I was so confident that the Heat were going to win that I actually brought out the broom. I was literally, I literally had my broom next to me while the game was going on. But specifically at the end of the fourth quarter, uh, DiVincenzo drives baseline to go up for a layup. Goran Dragic was right there, set to take a charge, and the ref calls a blocking foul. Now, in this situation, Miami still had their coaches challenge, and I was kind of surprised that Eric Spolstra didn't use that coaches challenge because I felt like that could have potentially won Miami a game. Because it was a 50-50 call, I felt like that call could have easily been overturned and they called it a charge and Miami would have won that game. But they didn't use that coach's challenge. DiVincenzo makes one free throw and it sends it into overtime. This overtime period was a slugfest as it wasn't very high scoring. It started immediately with Jimmy Butler driving in for an easy dunk, but then Chris Milton a couple minutes later, hit back-to-back pull-up -back cool jump shots, giving Milwaukee a 111-109 to lead. And what's about to transpire next makes me wish Eric Spolstra used his coach's challenge when Goran Dragic tries to take a charge against DiVincenzo. Miami de defended this possession real well, which forced Brooke Lopez to take a fadeaway deep two, and Bam Adebayo fouled him on that jump shot which in my mind pretty much cost us the game right there Eric Sposer decides to use his coach's challenge on that but it was deemed unsuccessful just because Bam clearly hit Lopez's arm slash hand on the release so so he shoots two free throws and he makes them both and Milwaukee has a 113 to 109 lead with about 45 seconds left to go Tyler Hero would quickly respond with a three, which made the Heat only be down by one with 30 seconds to go. But Chris Milton shortly after would give Tyler Hero the business as he drains a three-point shot in his face, which pretty much sealed the deal for the game. Once again, Tyler Hero would make a three of his own right after that, but it was too little too late as Milwaukee escapes with a 118-115 victory over the Miami Heat, avoiding the sweep. The Bucks live to fight another day, but I personally believe that the Miami Heat will dispose of them in Game 5, with or without Giannis, because I don't believe that the Bucks can beat the Heat two games in a row, so I think that Game 5 is where the Miami Heat will advance to the Eastern Conference Finals. But yeah, I think that'll do it for my first video. I'll probably do another one of these once the teams for the Conference Finals are set, give you my predictions and what I think is going to happen. But I'm still trying this thing out and I know I'm gonna get better at this. So I'm gonna just wait to see what happens and Hopefully good things turn out to happen. Until next time, I will see y'all later.